So um, I'm making this video to serve as kind of a, just a seeing how you can use Oculus Medium in a development pipeline scenario. Um, you know, I've been really impressed with what Oculus Medium can do, um, albeit there's, you know, some issues in regards to like resolution and things like that, but aren't like crazy bad. I mean, you can really get away with some cool stuff in there, um, especially if it's like the start of the pipeline. And so this video in particular is going to kind of show how you can use this for the start of your pipeline and then use traditional tools like ZBrush and Substance Painter to eventually make your finished model and, and bring it out. Um, so in this particular, you know, this opening segment, I'm, I'm in Oculus uh, Medium here and just kind of sculpting out a little basic kind of rock uh, formation structure. I'm just using the, the standard functions that are in here, you know, trying some different techniques like carving that don't work so great as you can see right there. And I think I ended up just smoothing those out. Um, and of course I just fed this video up so we can kind of get through it and, and show the entire process. Uh, I just kind of wanted to show that the pipeline development from start to finish, if you're creating an object inside of Oculus Medium and then taking it out, exporting it, retopologizing it, um, and then eventually uh, baking, you know, the UVs and all that stuff and texturing it and all the fun stuff we, we do. So, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, just kind of experimenting right here. Um, and <laughs> then I think it went into the actual Oculus uh, rock kind of tools they have in there and just started stamping around to make some kind of rock formation. Um, and then it started to finally come together in a little bit. This was just me kind of trial and error, but, um, I really love the stamping feature. It's just really nice to be able to get in there and just kind of click away and create stuff. I mean, that's just, it's so freeing inside of uh, virtual reality doing that because, you know, it's something you can't really do in ZBrush and other programs. Like you can, you can do it. It's just, it takes a little bit longer. And you know, every minute counts when you're, when you're doing 3D work, especially if you're trying to do stuff quickly. See right here, I started to kind of, okay, get into more of a, a chunkier look instead of this fragmented mess I was making. Um, and then as I, as I kind of go through here, I'm just kind of clicking away. And again, I'm just using, this is just the standard rock tools that they give you that are in there. So just kind of spinning this model around and just clicking here and there to kind of create something that looks like a craggy, rock kind of uh, sculpture, something you could use in a game and twist around in various sizes and formations. I think right there I'm starting to be like, okay, this is good. And and then just increase some resolution on it and then export it out, saved it, do, 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 rock. And there we go. This should finish up here and we're saving it and we're good and out. Okay, so inside ZBrush, the second part of the equation here. I brought the sculpture that I did and it looks great. If you actually bring it into ZBrush, you can see right there, it looks pretty awesome. Um, just kind of analyzing it to see if there's any you know, major areas. You can see like the resolution is not great. I think we're at like 400,000 points, but um, I just kind of ran some clay polish filters on it um, just to kind of bring out the edges a little bit more and also fix those crevices that were kind of like a little bit bitty. Um, I also subdivided it to about two point four or four million uh, points at one point, just to kind of make it uh, better. There we go, four million right there, just to kind of clean it up and make it a little more solid. Um, then once I got it right, it's all I pretty much did. And then I just exported it out, um, did some uh, Dynamesh on it, just to kind of clean up some of the, the mesh. And then I just did a little export. And then uh, we have a decimated version, just to have that for retopology purposes, if we use it in Maya or something like that. So we've got a high poly and a low poly. And so once that was ready, uh, we just did that decimation and export it out. And we're good to go. And then we bring it into uh, Topo Gun. So here we go into Topo Gun. Typically when I do retopology, I bring everything into Topo Gun to do it. Um, I just think it's really easy. I mean, there's like five or six tools in there to use. There's nothing crazy. You can't get really too messed up. Um, and you can bring in super high res meshes if you need them. So there's the, the rock sculpture that was done in medium as well as ZBrush. Um, and then in here, we just kind of start clicking away and, and doing all our retopology. Um, you know, it's, 
it's interesting because I, I feel like in Maya now the retopology tools are even better than what's available in like a topo gun, but just kind of wanted to do a speed through. And I think I, you know, retopology takes forever. And, uh, you know, I was always trying to find like the better tools to use for this. Um, and this was sped up to, I think like 400% or something. <laughs> um, but you know, using these retopology tools, um, you know, it's just a, it just takes forever. And so on this particular part of the video, uh, we're just, we're just looking at, you know, the retopology process, kind of, you know, what you have to do for a high poly mesh in order to retopologize it. And you can see, I'm just basically going through and creating things. I think I sped it up like big time here so we can just see what we're going through. Typically, if I'm doing something like a, like a crack, craggy rock thing, I'll try to get like the big faces first. So you can see, I kind of just outlined some of the big features that I saw. And then I'll go in and just kind of hit up the details and just start filling in the gaps. Um, that's typically what I do most of the time. With character stuff, it's more edge loop driven and things like that. But for things like this, it's kind of all over the place. And you really don't have to have great, great, great topology on stuff like, you know, uh, rocks and things like that that exist in your environment um, because you can... You, you know, it's, it's rock stuff, right? You're not going to be like staring at it like all the time. Um, so you don't have to be like super, super concise on your topology. It's just it's more along, more along the lines of just getting it done. Uh, it's kind of why I chose a rock for this video. So we're just kind of, you can see, we're just kind of blazing through this thing and just doing retopology everywhere, right? So all these different areas here, we're just kind of clicking through them, getting them done. So at this point in the process of just bringing the, the model into Maya and in here, you know, I'm just doing my UVs, just setting everything up. I did a projection of the model and I'm just kind of going through and making all my cuts to separate this out into some shells for, you know, my eventual baking and things like that. Um, typically for a model like this, I'm just kind of going through and, and finding all the little crevices uh, <laughs> because you have a lot of these outcroppings. So I just want to have some nice shells to work with. So just kind of going through and separating those out as I can to try to get a nice even um, uh, flow for the textures and try to you know remove anything that's stretching too much, things like that. And just kind of going through and orienting those. You can see on my map there on the side, once I get it to the point where I think it's good, um, and I, I do kind of chop these up a little bit. Um, I'll just lay it out all to the same ratio so I can get a nice even bake. And we can see that shortly here. As I go through, there should be an area where I actually yeah, do some sewing and some other things. Unwrapping. There we go. Just kind of laid it all out together. And checking it out. Looks good. Export it out. And then into Substance Painter. We're bringing the model in. There's the low poly that I unwrapped in Maya. And bringing in the model settings and we're doing a bake. So this particular bake, I think we did it at uh, the anti-aliasing I set up to four, which I think was taking a, <laughs> a little bit of time. Uh, then there it goes, kind of went through. 
and then once we actually get the, the final bacon here, which should pop up here shortly. There we go. Uh, turned out pretty good. You know, that was that was all from that high res detail from uh, Oculus Medium, but um, I did some very, very minor work inside of ZBrush. And here I'm just kind of adding some paint layers on substance. And I used the AO just to kind of add some shadow, usually in a like a multiply layer over the top and just kind of go in and dab some extra color onto the rock besides that greenish just to get some variation in the hues and a little bit of blue here and there just to kind of also add that in and i like to use the bone filter just because it brings out those edges nicely but i'll just alter the color so it's not like bone it looks more like rock and then once that's good um, i go through and i just add some highlight layers over these nice edges so very, I just kind of dab around and just get some nice uh, highlights on there and kind of uh, rotate my environment so I can see some of those textures. I think right there, there it is, rotate it around and just kind of dab some of these out. You'll see it's just white right now. I'm just kind of airbrushing white to get these spots, but you'll see what it does. It's kind of nice. It's a really quick way to kind of make your model pop a little bit more. Just kind of come in and add some focus to certain areas. Just kind of tap around get those do, do, do. looks good and then what we do is we set it as a uh, overlay layer so if we go to our layer and set it as overlay and then just duplicate it a couple times till it looks good you'll see right there there we go and then i duplicated it again and again i think i just duplicated this like four or five times there's one and then again duplicate it again duplicate it again right I'm just kind of like you see those little edges kind of pop out a little bit more just kind of an easy way to do that and then once that's ready after duplicating a couple more layers I think that looks pretty rad you know, coming from medium um, let's just export out the, the mesh and bring that into unity and there's gonna finish textures and we'll just bake it out here, there's our finished textures. Go to the folder, bam, and export. There we go. But then we'll move on to Unity. And so in Unity, there it is. There's the finished uh, models. You know, these were all taken from, you know, started in Oculus Medium. Then I exported it out and I brought it into ZBrush for a little bit of tiny cleanup very very minor and then um, out of ZBrush I brought it into Topo Gun did my retopology um, and you could use Maya for that or any other retopology program I just used uh, Topo Gun because I'm fast with it um, but then uh, after that then I brought it into Maya did my UV unwrapping and then back into Substance Painter where I basically set up and baked all my textures onto the uh, the sculpted detail that we had um, you know made a, an overlay layer for my AO just to kind of pop out some of those shadows and then uh, when it was ready I eventually brought it into uh, what we see here in unity so looks looks fairly good you know I'm, I'm this was you know probably all when it's all said and done I would say timeline wise we're probably looking at I don't know, maybe two and a half hours to get this final piece, which was not bad. I mean, the sculpting time alone inside Oculus Medium was not very long. I think I spent 20 minutes sculpting that thing, and that was just with the prefab pieces they had and just kind of having fun. The retopology in Topo Gun took the absolute longest, and I probably could have done that quicker. You can see I'm just adding some little accent lights in here to <laughs> kind of make it look cooler. Um, but, uh, you know, really, really happy with the end result. Um, turned out, turned out very nice. Um, you know, I mean, there are some imperfections here and there, and uh, you know, I could have fine-tuned a little bit more of the the details, but you know, overall, like for a, a really fast, quick piece, you know, turned out great. Hope you liked it.